Hi guys. Um, thank you so much for joining us for our monthly Blue Trail Guide webinar series. Um, my name is Faye Augustin and I'm the Intermountain West Blue Trails Manager for American Rivers. I'm really glad that you guys are all able to join us today um, for our webinar focusing on revitalizing local communities through recreation and river protection. So just a couple of quick things, guys, um, technical support-wise. Uh, if your connection is lost, I would encourage you to first uh, log in again to GoToWebinar using your unique web link and password that were provided to you when you registered with the GoToWebinar site. Um, additionally, we are recording this webinar. Um, and so the slideshow and um, a recording of, of the conversations that we have here will be available um, for, um, for re-watching um, and for asking additional questions on our Blue Trails Guide website at bluetrailsguide.org slash blog. And that will be available um, later this week, Thursday, um, February 26th. Um, if you have additional questions um, or comments after the webinar, I encourage you uh, to get in touch with me. And my contact information um, is available on the slide now, fagustin at americanrivers.org. So to ask questions, guys, I encourage you to ask questions throughout the webinar. Um, we have a really handy question box that's located on your GoToWebinar control panel. Um, so throughout the webinar, if you have any questions uh, for either Monty um, or Garrett, our two panelists today, um, I would encourage you just to type your questions uh, in the box on your control panel. Um, and at the end, we will have about um, between 10 and 15 minutes uh, to answer as many questions um, as we have time for. Additionally, um, we will have a, a space for you to post additional questions or comments that you might have um, after the webinar, again, on our Blue Trails Guide. Um, at bluetrailsguide.org slash forum. Um, it's in our community forum section of the website. And then finally, uh, we'll be posting a transcript of all of the questions and the answers that were asked during the webinar um, by next Monday, March 2nd. And that will also be available um, on the Blue Trails Guide blog at bluetrailsguide.org slash blog. So again, guys, I'm, I'm just really excited that um, you all joined us uh, to participate in our webinar today. Um, and, and basically, you know, what we're going to cover is just an overview, a brief overview at the beginning of how um, recreation, river recreation and river protection and restoration can help spur economic development for communities across the country and some of the great benefits um, that recreation has already had um, on local economies. And then we'll be diving um, much deeper into a case study example in Rockingham, North Carolina, um, where uh, we worked closely with um, the city um, of Rockingham and a number of local partners um, to develop a uh, the Hitchcock Creek River Blue Trail. And so we'll be joined by, or we're being joined by Monty Crump, who is the city manager of Rockingham, who will um, be diving a lot deeper into the great success uh, that they've had on uh, the Hitchcock Creek Blue Trail. And then finally, as I mentioned at the end, we'll have a short question and answer session um, about 10 minutes or so. So please, uh, again, feel free to ask um, any questions throughout the webinar again in the, uh, in the question box. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, my colleague, Garrett Yokesis, who is the Southeast Regional Director of American Rivers. Um, and he's just going to give us a brief overview of uh, how recreation and protection spur economic development. So, Garrett, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Faye. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for inviting me to be part of this. Um, yeah, I, I do want to talk a bit about this, this great success we've had in, at Hitchcock Creek, but first um, I want to talk about the importance of outdoor recreation overall. Uh, many of you all have probably seen this report before the outdoor um, recreation Industry, I'm sorry, the Outdoor Industry Association, uh, which put out a report on the economic benefits of outdoor recreation. 
Um, and, you know, it's an often overlooked uh, economic driver in the United States and in local communities across the United States. Um, perhaps it's overlooked because there's no big corporate headquarters, uh, no skyscraper that's, you know, with flashing lights. Uh, but instead, it's um, outdoor recreation is a very diffuse business. It is kind of the epitome of a, of a small, locally driven business community that uh, really does connect with with uh, communities of all sizes and with the, the citizens in those communities. Uh, in, in addition to these statistics here, which are national, uh, there's I've got some more information, more detailed information on um, on the value of, of freshwater recreation in North Carolina and South Carolina, where um, where in, in the two Carolinas, uh, there are over 32 million uh, user days or, or trips to the freshwater rivers and lakes uh, of the Carolinas. Uh, direct consumer spending is $1.6 billion. So um, it's a huge component of the, of the economy in North Carolina uh, and South Carolina, where uh, outdoor recreation supports over 400,000 jobs. Um, so next slide, please, Faye. So a little background uh, before I introduce Monty uh, for a second time, I guess. Um, I'm going to talk. We'll be talking about the Hitchcock Creek Blue Trail uh, as a case study. Um, we began working with the town of Rockingham uh, on a hydropower relicensing of hydropower dams that were being licensed uh, in their area, and then began collaborating on a dam removal. This is the Steels Mill Dam on Hitchcock Creek. Um, and because of their water quality problems, uh, the city identified it as one that they wanted removed, and we were um, fortunate to be able to collaborate with them on that removal. Uh, and in 2009, the, the dam came down, and um, and we now have a, a free-flowing river uh, at the section where the where the dam used to be. And once this dam was removed, it really kind of uh, got American Rivers involved more in in helping to create the Hitchcock Creek Blue Trail, where um, with this dam out, a, a big obstacle to recreation out, um, we saw a great opportunity to work with the city to, to promote recreation and also to promote um, the protection of this creek so that it would remain a, uh, an asset for the community uh, into the future. And, um, and so after several years of work, um, we officially, in, May of 2014, the, uh, the Hitchcock Creek Blue Trail was launched. Uh, it includes a lot of great things, including this map, but also includes new access points, uh, a greenway that runs along the, the creek, a number of acres of protected lands, uh, some great signage. And it also has really helped spur the local economy. Um, there are now people recreating there every day. And there's an outfitter that um, the city has helped uh, get into business that's providing a service to the people who want to um, want to paddle the river or the creek. Um, so this has been a really great success story for us at American Rivers, um, and most of the credit really goes to the city of Rockingham. And uh, and with that, I want to turn it over to Monty, who um, Monty Crump, who more than anybody um, has been kind of the visionary for what this once forgotten creek that runs right through Rockingham could be how it could be turned into a recreation destination and an economic driver for the community. So um, with that, Monty, uh, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Garrett. Thank you, Faye. Thank everyone for joining today. I'm going to give an opportunity to go over our Hitchcock Creek Blue Trail and Greenway project. Uh, the first thing I would say, Faye, if you want to go to that next slide, uh, I think the key points that I want to relay to right off the bat is patience. Uh, it takes a long time to put a project like this together. Uh, and, and I'll go through a timeline here in a few minutes of, of, of how large that, that timeline is. But you know, it starts with a vision. We have a natural resource here that was largely uh, undisturbed. The repairing buffers were there along the creek uh, in great shape. Uh, pretty much undisturbed, even though it runs through town, uh, had not been in intrusion from any urban uh, activities. Uh, so in the early 2000, 2002, uh, we began work on doing a watershed action plan. Uh, 
uh, for Hitchcock Creek and the Hitchcock Creek watershed, which is around 40,000 acres, so it's a considerable watershed. Uh, the city has a dam on Hitchcock Creek that supplies our water for the town with it. It has a safe yield of about two of about 12 million gallons a day, and we take about two million a day out. And from that dam all the way to uh, the PD River, uh, there was a, a couple dams, and of course we've already spoken of removing the Steels Mill Dam, and that's kind of the way this this whole project started. It, it went from there identifying, the, looking at the water quality, uh, the potential threats uh, to the preservation of this stream. Uh, and the protection of, of, of repairing buffers, and you know, in the future, uh, and, and and how we could in, incorporate that. Uh, there was there was a dam on Hitchcock Creek that had blown out in a major flood in 1938, and had left a, approximately 90 acre uh, old lake bed there. Uh, it had been left when the dam was taken out and not removed, and that had sat there for years, uh, growing up in. Uh, silviculture uh, and something needed to be done with that in terms of ownership uh, and then removal of the steel mill dam but just looked at all of that in some total started with the watershed action plan uh, and like I noted earlier we started on that in around 2002 2004 worked on that put the funding together got the watershed action plan done uh, and that's established the foundation for all subsequent work that we did along Hitchcock Creek, and we were able to document very good water quality in Hitchcock Creek, mainly due to the fact uh, that the repair and buffers over the years had been had been left without urban intrusion, uh, road building, that type of stuff like that had not adversely in, impacted it, and uh, the farms had done a good job along the way uh, in, in some of their activities not spilling over with fertilizer and stuff like that. We didn't find any evidence of that. Even though there were some poultry farms and stuff upstream from that, we didn't find any evidence of that uh, impairing water quality, which which was great and what we wanted to find. So when we got that, we decided we well, let's move forward with um, you know conserving it, possible recreation, and Garrett touched on a little bit of how our relationship started along the time we were working on relicensing of the dams on the Yakimpiti River, and one thing led to the other in this kind of effort to, to can dovetail what we're doing with the watershed action plan moved over to that. So if we started working around 2000, 2002 on the plans for the dam removal and the watershed action plan, it, everything started to, to, to fit in actually in 2009. Uh, after the watershed action plan, we had it in hand in 2006. The next thing that occurred was in 2009 was removal of the Steel's Mill Dam at Cordova, uh, which was the first construction project we were aware of to open up Pitchcock Creek to public navigation all the way uh, from the city's dam all the way to the Yakin PD River and to establish the, the fish runs there from the, from the PD River uh, because there are no, from where the confluence of Hitchcock Creek goes into the PD River. There are no dams between that confluence and the Atlantic Ocean, where it comes in at Winlock, Winyaw Bay around Georgetown, South Carolina. Um, 2009, I noted this, the dam came out, opened up that lower section. Uh, in 2011, the, we did a debris removal project. Uh, we did that obviously by hand. Uh, and, it, uh, and we did that for a 10-mile stretch on Hitchcock Creek, and we opened it. Uh, and by doing it, you know, w w by hand, no heavy equipment, we maintained the integrity of the creek. We didn't uh, interrupt any soil, soil uh, either adjacent to the creek, in the creek bed. Uh, all the tree stumps, all that type stuff was left for habitat, and we were able to maintain that. Uh, the cost of that was around $90,000. We got a grant from the North Carolina Water Resources to accomplish that task. Uh, also in 2011, the city finalized the acquisition of the 83 to 90 acres of the old PD Lake bed along Hitchcock Creek. Uh, and we wanted to develop a greenway there along that for passive recreation. Uh, also, that was to be, uh, that's kind of a, if you look on the map, that's kind of a central point uh, access to Hitchcock Creek and that was going to be a access point for uh, the Greenway and, and the Blue Trail. 
Uh, in 2012, we con completed the first phase of East Concrete Greenway. Uh, they ended up with over 6,000 feet of improved walking trails and three pedestrian bridges over Hitchcock Creek. Uh, and it's really neat there that folks can be on the blue trail coming down on a canoe, kayak, whatever, and you're going right along the greenway and you come up on folks that are walking on the greenway or they're standing over the bridge or crossing the bridge. And it's, it's, it's very nice and uh, uh, good good relationship between both the Greenway and the Blue Trail simultaneously located, you know, there together. Also in 2012, we completed the acquisition and construction of three public access to Hitchcock Creek, uh, which if you look on that map, it starts at the northern end of the map at Robertdale, Steel Street access, the one that I'm referring to now, uh, and, and at Cordova where the dam was taken out. Uh, previously, there were no public, ac public owned accesses to Hitchcock Creek. Uh, and all of these accesses were improved with parking, uh, canoe access, uh, where you could easily port. Um, it's, it's pretty natural or pretty rough, but other than that, we've got steps where you can go in and launch small uh, uh, piers, um, handrails, and a couple of them where you can walk down and bring your canoe down with it. Uh, so we've we worked on making all of those accesses as, as, uh, as safe as we can and public friendly. Uh, another component of this project was, uh, as part of the relicensing project, uh, Duke Energy had an 18 acre track of land, a blow blue at Falls Dam on the, uh, the Pity River below the confluence of Hitchcock Creek. That land was originally acquired uh, by the forerunner of Duke Energy's Carolina Power and Light for the location of another dam. The dam was never built, and under federal license, and most of you are aware, if you take the land for a dam, they don't use it. You, you know, you need to put it back on uh, for public use. And as part of the relicensing project, that that property was sold, uh, and a group of wildlife. Uh, Conservancy, a whole group of environmental groups got together, a whole host of those bought that property. So it was given to the Wildlife Commission and the Conservatory. Uh, and the key point about that was that being located on the on the river just above the North Carolina and South Carolina border, there was no public access there. Uh, the only other public access on the PD River was up at the 74 Bridge. It was many miles up the river. So as part of this Hitchcock Trail project, we approached the state about leasing a portion of this water frontage on PD River uh, to put a uh, another boat lamp, public access. We ended up leasing 25 acres of land for around 25, around 25 acres of land for about 24, 24 25 years. We we're going to put a printed campground there, boat landing. So it opened up multiple opportunities for access that you could put in Hitchcock Creek, go all the way down Hitchcock Creek, now go to the PD River, and end up near the North Carolina, South Carolina. And, or you can make a day trip, half day trip, anywhere on Hitchcock Creek. You could put in on the low end of Hitchcock Creek and go down on the river. It just opened up a tremendous opportunities to have many kind of different uh, day trips for, for water use. Um, when we started this, you have no idea who you're going to end up with. We ended up with a multitude of partners, state agencies, uh, NOAA, uh, just a small list of folks that are involved here, uh, North Carolina Division of Water Resources, Wildlife Resources Commission, the Soil and Water Conservation District, local district, USDA, both the Farm Service Agency and Natural Resources, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, National Marine Fisheries, you know, all of these folks have been involved. When we did the removal of the dam, we actually got a $50,000 grant to uh, document the, the restoration of the fish runs of shad, of which we have. That's the native fish that would come up. Uh, the PD River, both hickory shad and American shad. Uh, and I know we did document those uh, above Steele's uh, Mills Dam after it was removed. Uh, there is one small dam left on Hitchcock Creek but it's a, a dam that can be easily portaged, and we've got a great portage around it. It kind of creates a pond, and uh, we actually put floating docks out there. When you get to the pond, you can get your canoe, go over to where the floating docks are, get out on the docks, guide your canoe around, and go safely down to portage and miss where you would, uh, unfortunately, go over the dam if you went the wrong side of the pond. But uh, we have not had anybody go over the pond voluntarily. 
I mean, over the dam at that place voluntarily. But one thing we found out was that Hitch Steel Street Steel Street Dam was owned by a private corporation, an old paper plant, uh, and also the, the the dam I was just speaking about at Midway, owned by a private corporation. All of those were very very cooperative. Um, assign all the releases to do whatever's with the to remove the dam. Fully cooperative. We had many private landowners up and down the creek donate land for this project, uh, put in conservation easements. Uh, once the dam at Steele's Mill was removed, before we removed it, it had actually been breached, and it had left about a 70 or 80 oak acre old lake bed, which had never been claimed. The city went in there and did a quick claim uh, and, and, and took possession of that and put it in a conservation easement so it would always be preserved. So, you know, that's a pretty quick 10 cent, you know, tour on what we've done with the Blue Trail and the Greenway and, and actually in product development. Um, I will tell you what is a surprise, and I guess it's not a surprise that folks who understand outdoor recreation uh, as well as you all do. It's just been phenomenal what it's done for this community. Uh, we have a national chain sport goods store here in town that actually they sold so many kayaks that they would run special sales, put a half page advertisement in the newspaper and put the kayaks for sale and would have across the bottom this supplies to the Rockingham store only. And it's nothing in summertime, springtime, particularly good weather after school, during the day, seeing canoes, kayaks on the back of trucks, trailers. Uh, you come by these public access points and they're full. Uh, even here in wintertime before the bad weather hit in the last couple of weeks, I can see between 25 and 30 cars on Sunday afternoons, Saturday afternoons. Uh, we put in bathhouses at the main access. We've got uh, covered pavilions there where folks can have uh, snacks, meals, uh, be the start or end point for a trip. Uh, and it's just been phenomenal, the public acceptance of it, uh, and they're obviously the use. Uh, the city loaned money to a, a private individual who started an outfitter business, uh, and we specifically loaned her money to, to buy canoes, belly acts, all the different type stuff that she uses, and she runs a, uh, a business now year-round. It's been very successful. In fact, she came back and borrowed additional money. Uh, to buy some more additional equipment because it was so, it was so successful. Uh, it's been heartening to see folks that get on the trail, and they've kind of got a loose network of folks, and they'll set up uh, times to go out and, and do trash, debris, clean up, keep the, uh, the creek clean. Uh, they're good about calling in when trees fall across uh, the creek for us to go out and 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 keep the, the stream navigable. Uh, everybody's been very respectful of it. Uh, and just have really thoroughly enjoyed the, the thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been hugely successful. Um, so everything is, and I'd not I'd be lying if I told you that I had this vision along with the city back in 2000 2002. That 10 years later, the, everything came out exactly like it has. I have no idea it would be accepted like it has been and, and gotten the gotten the uh, good public use to it. So I'll stop there and answer any questions. And uh, Garrett, you can chime in, or Faye, or that's. Uh, I'll stop there. Great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Monty and Garrett, for uh, for the really excellent overview of um, how recreation and protection can help to spur economic development. And Monty, thank you again, as always, for the great explanation of um, of the tremendous success that you've had um, on Hitchcock Creek. I know that um, it's been really uh, really neat for us at American River to just see um, the amazing work that you guys have done, um, the city of Rockingham has done to, to connect um, their community to, um, to the Grave Creek that you guys have running through your backyard. Um, so we've got a, we've got a few, uh, quite a few questions that have, that have come in over the last uh, 20 minutes or so. Um, and so we'll answer as many as we can in the last, you know, five minutes or so, just we're respectful of of time um, for all of you. So just as a reminder, if you have additional questions, please feel free to type them into your question box now. All of these questions will be answered and available um, on the Blue Trails Guide website um, by next Monday. So uh, let's just dive into some of the questions that we've got uh, that we've got so far. 
Um, and Monty, I think this first one is uh, this first one would I think probably be best answered by you, um, which is uh, from somebody who's interested in knowing more about who um, who was who was mainly in charge of coordinating uh, the watershed plan and the greenway planning that you guys did along Hitchcock Creek, and how did you guys secure and find um, funding sources to help pay for this? We got grant. We got a series of grant funds. Uh, Duke Energy. We had a private foundation, the Coal Foundation, and there was money. Uh, there was money available to the state through the Division of Water Resources, uh, and then the city put in uh, money. Also, it was just a consortium of, of grants, state funding, and local funding to do the watershed, the greenway planning. And all of this stuff, basically, we did in house between myself and the city planner, uh, and you know, and our staff has bought into this uh, and have been very much. Uh, I'd be remiss not to mention just how much city staff, local effort was put into uh, all of this planning. Uh, they did a lot of the construction. City forces constructed most of these public accesses. Uh, we purchased these prefab bridges, bridges, and the and the and the city installed them on the Greenway. Uh, we maintained the Blue Trail and the Greenway. Uh, we built the access points. So uh, a lot of it is local uh, sweat and, and sweat equity. Uh, but the, the major source of funding or funding when the Watershed Action Plan was just a consortium of, of private foundations, uh, Duke Energy, and, and state grants. Great. Thanks, Monty. Um, the next question that I've got um, is a question about kind of helping to, I know you mentioned uh, just a moment ago that, that uh, the city of Rockingham does the majority of maintaining uh, the blue trail and the green way. Um, but uh, some folks are wondering if there is a, uh, like a local uh, friend of Hitchcock Creek group that's been established. Um, and if there is, how did I get started? And if not, um, how have you continued to kind of work uh, with the local community to, um, to to just sort of develop this stewardship um, among uh, the citizens of Rocky View. Well, you know, I think I mentioned right close to the end of my remarks that this the folks that are going up and down they've kind of unofficially created a friends of the of the Hitchcock Creek, if you would, and they they get together uh, and 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 do. Tr Main to pick up trash and debris. There are several bridge crossings, major roads that a lot of trash is thrown off of. That's the major source of trash that gets in the creek, uh, and they kind of do that informally on their own. This outfitter, she's on the creek so much, she notifies us about any downed trees or whatever. And we really hate to farm that out to anybody else officially for liability purposes. So we do that. We ask them to report down trees or snags or anything like that. Uh, that, that needs to be removed from navigability. Uh, and we we kind of encourage them to do that. Spend all their time and effort on debris, uh, you know, trash, that type, and notification, and leave the, the big stuff up to let the city crews go in and, and do that. Because you know, after 10, 10 years of helping do this, uh, they they've gotten pretty good at it, and you know, and that's the way that's accomplished. Excellent. Thanks, Monty. We've got time for one more question. Um, so, Monty, this is, um, we've had a couple of questions about, about this specific topic, but uh, you had mentioned in your explanation um, when you were talking about the Blue Trail and how um, after uh, the restoration occurred on Hitchcock Creek, there were a number of private landowners that were really excited to put their Riverside land um, into conservation easements. And so um, a number of folks are wondering if um, you had specific information uh, that you provided to landowners when they were considering providing um, access and, and easements along um, along the creek or if they were just um, or a lot of that really kind of uh, stemmed from their own personal interest I think majority of it is that their their personal interest and just want to be benevolent the this creek remind you runs right by a very affluent neighborhood in Rockingham the old steel mill dam is very visible uh, it's right within a short walking, walking distance of downtown Rockingham. This creek has high visibility, so the community awareness of it is very high. So when we started, the, and it was well publicized, all of our efforts over the years, the local media, 
the acquisition of the lake bed, the blue trail, the greenway, you know, all of this stuff is pretty much occurring in plain view and folks can see it, they ask questions, they get involved and, and we actually had landowners calling us with no contact from us whatsoever, hey, I've got five acres, I've got this, I've got that and that's the way that started and it's just basically these folks have been benevolent and come forward and of course the business and industries along the way felt the same way uh, and it was just kind of uh, one of those things you started and it was it looked good it was successful it's a good feel good project uh, the conservation easement natural resource the recreation you go by there and you see uh, Boy Scout troops five or six kids getting out you've got a grandchild or a niece or nephew that's in school they go down Hitchcock Creek and they're writing essays about it at school uh, and, and all this stuff actually occurred that would never have happened if you know they didn't have a creek to go out, you know, get onto, and it's very easy. Most folks can drive to it. It's easy to do after school in the summertime, uh, and you know, and that's that's been probably the most uplifting thing about the Scott Creek is those kids that are getting here, getting in canoes, kayaks, that are wanting to go out there, that are bugging their mom and dad about going kayaking and canoeing. You know, they understand the, the conservation part of it. They see what it means to have clean water. And, and hopefully by exposing this next generation and all these young kids that are out on this creek uh, to what preservation can mean, you know, that it's, it's as much about that, what the message we're sending the next generation that they see as providing a recreation opportunity today and I think that drew a lot of folks to want to be a part of it and donate land and, and participate in it. That's awesome. Um, well, that is that is definitely something I think a lot of communities across the country I'm sure wish um, that they could help to create that sort of stewardship um, in their community. So. Um, I just want to thank you all uh, again for joining us for our, um, our monthly webinar series. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the webinar was recorded um, and will be available for viewing um, on Thursday. You can access the, um, the webinar on the Blue Trails Guide website at bluetrailsguide.org slash blog. Um, and that will be available for you. Additionally, we will have um, all of the questions, because I know there were a number of questions um, that we did not have time to answer. Um, and those will be available on the Blue Trails Guide blog as well. So please be sure um, to circle back and uh, check on, um, on the questions. And, and feel free to ask any additional questions at that point um, that, you, uh, that you might have or that um, you didn't have a chance to, to ask um, over the last 30 minutes. Um, and then finally, one last, just final plug for our, next, uh, for our webinar next uh, next month. It will be on uh, Tuesday, March 17th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Mountain Time. Um, and we'll be joined by two of our colleagues at Meridian Institute, we, where we will be focusing um, the discussion around um, kind of uh, conflict resolution within stakeholder groups. So kind of finishing up our conversation that we had a couple of months ago about community partnerships and stakeholder groups. So thank you all again for joining us. Um, Monty and Garrett, I so appreciate um, the two of you taking time out of your day to join us and to share um, the great work, uh, Monty, that you've, that you've done um, in, in the city of Rocky Camp and on Hitchcock Creek. So thank you guys so much. Please feel free to reach out with us, to reach out to us with any additional questions that you guys might have. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and we hope to see you guys back next month. Thank you, friends. Say, do you need me to stay on for anything? This is Monty. Nope, you're good to go. Thank you, Monty. Okay, very good. Thank great. you all. Thanks, Faye. Well, I, I hope that's up. what you were looking for, Faye. That was great. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, very good, Monty. Appreciate it. And um, Faye, with those questions that you have, the additional questions, are you going to be asking me and or Monty to follow up on those, or what's what's the next steps for that? Um, yeah, 